Welcome to another example for Chapter 4 in OpenStax College Physics with Force Problems. This is our first full example video where we have an incline. And although we saw how to do this briefly in lecture, this is our first full number problem where we're going to see that process that we talked about in action. So we have a sled that is pulled down an incline. The incline could be pointing in either direction, but as long as we draw a picture and then are consistent with it, that's the part that matters. So we have this sled, I'm just gonna draw a box, and it's being pulled down an incline using a pull force, and because we are not told about any additional angle, it's gonna look like this. So this pull force of 33 newtons is pulling the sled down the ramp. We're also told that there's a friction force and that's going to be acting against the motion. So the friction is going to be acting uphill against the motion and that's five newtons. Our goal is to find the acceleration of the sled down the incline. Every example problem that we do in chapter four that has more than one force, we want to draw the real picture as we're reading the problem, basically training ourselves to think about this picture, this situation, as we read about it. But what we also need to do in our chapter four problems is draw a free body diagram. Now, the really key thing here is when we have any ramp, we are making a new set of coordinates in this tilted coordinate system where we're treating X as being directly along the ramp, so parallel to the ramp, and Y as being perfectly perpendicular to the ramp, a 90 degree angle away. What will be useful for us to do is to always draw that new tilted coordinate system near our free body diagram. That way we have a sense of what direction all of our arrows and vector components need to point. First of all, we can start with our little tilted sled, we can start with gravity. Gravity doesn't care that we're on an incline. While we're on the surface of Earth, gravity is always gonna point straight down and it's gonna be mass times the acceleration of gravity, g. In this particular case, it's 10 times 9.8 or 98 Newtons. However, what we recognize, hopefully, based on the prior lecture video and our understanding of normal force, if the surface is at an angle, the normal force still has to go perpendicular to it. In all of these ramp problems, if we've identified this tilted coordinate system as intended, the normal force is always going to be in the Y direction, away from the ramp, but perpendicular to that ramp. We also talked briefly in lecture video about how to break this gravity force into components. We go away from the normal force, that is step one, and that is F, G, Y, and then we go downhill, down the ramp. It is extremely, extremely important for us to recognize that this here is the hypotenuse still, the original black arrow that I've drawn, and we have to be drawing the um, pieces of it as smaller pieces. Far too often I see students extend this all the way down and then just go sideways across, and now you've created a very different triangle, and it is much harder for you to understand why we are using sine and cosine in the places where we are using this. Don't draw it like this, and if you recognize that you are drawing it in that particular way, practice and practice and practice until you are no longer doing that. This is the best reason I can really give for why it is important to draw this tilted coordinate system and potentially to train yourself to use colored pens or pencils to help yourself out. All right, so let's get rid of that incorrect drawing. All right, so back to the piece of gravity that is along the ramp, that's the X component. We also have the pull force, which because it is along the ramp is just going to be one of our X forces here. So F pull is 
pulling downhill at 33 newtons, and F friction, or F subscript F, is 5 newtons. Now if we look at this, the one thing that we need to add in is when we are drawing this correctly, this force of gravity where step one is away from the normal force, step two is down the ramp, then the ramp angle, 25 degrees in this case, will fit into this upper corner if we are drawing it the way that we're training ourselves to draw it. That allows us to write for the y component, 98 cosine, 25 degrees, and for the x component, 98 sine, 25 degrees. In both cases, we are using the hypotenuse of 98 newtons because we've broken that up into two smaller pieces. All right, so why does all of this matter? The acceleration of the sled is perfectly down the ramp. There is no y component to this acceleration. It is only an acceleration along our tilted x direction, which means that the equation that we're really trying to solve is the net forces specifically in our tilted x direction are equal to mass times our acceleration specifically in the x direction. The free body diagram is the most important part of the problem, and if you spend the effort on drawing it correctly, large enough to be useful, and labeling everything in it, this is more than half of the problem, is drawing the free body diagram or force diagram correctly. Because now all we need to do is look at how many arrows point in our tilted x direction. I've been using color coding this whole time. It really is showing why color coding might help you with your own assignments, especially at test time. Um, bringing pens or pencils that ha have different colors is perfectly acceptable. We have three red arrows here that are pointing in the tilted x direction. We want the forces that point in the same direction as the acceleration. That's the pull force first. We also have the x component of gravity that is positive because it's in the direction of acceleration. And then we have to subtract friction because it is pointing opposite the direction of acceleration. And that's going to be equal to mass times acceleration that we're looking for. Now we can plug in what we have so far. We have 33 plus, in parentheses, 98 sine 25 degrees, minus 5, and all of that is equal, equals 10a. So I'll get the whole left side in my calculator. 69.4 newtons equals 10a. If we divide both sides by 10, then we get that a is 6.94 meters per second squared. And that is our final answer. Since we are pulling the sled downhill, it's going to be a bigger number than if we had just let it slide due to gravity. So that's somewhat higher number than what we often see in these kinds of problems is totally reasonable to us. As always, the most important part of problem solving is not following along for the numbers sake, but for the process sake. I want to make sure that you recognize that this method of tilting our coordinate system is absolutely essential whenever we have a ramp or incline in a problem. So we'll see lots of other examples in this chapter still, several of which have ramps and inclines, and we'll see plenty more in chapter five as well. So I will see you in those next videos.